All right, guys. So now that we have understood the data modeling and what data modeling can do for us, and you know, uh, we are ready to explore the data. It's time for us to move on to understanding the Tableau pane. That is the first worksheet of Tableau, right? So what uh, you're seeing on the screen is nothing but your playground, basically. Okay, and this is the entire, uh, you know, what do you say, event space where you can put in your stuff, and that's where we are going to work with the data. Now. There are many aspects of it, right? So uh, just like any other tool, it has various smaller components or I should say compartments over here. We need to understand each and every compartment, what that compartment does and what is the scope of our work as an analyst. What, how can we use that or how can we utilize that compartment to its biggest extent? Now, uh, if, if we just look at it, right, there are many things over here. So let's take it in an organized, in a step-by-step -step fashion. Now, first of all, there is a table over here, table pane. We can see all the tables. In fact, this is nothing but the entire data. Once you click on the drop down, you can see the entire set of variables, which are calendar, customers, product, right, sales, right. The entire set of data is over here. That is, this is the accumulation of uh, the data of all the five tables that we have just, you know, uh, uh, joined in data modeling in the previous video. There are certain other things, but we'll move on to that as well. But this is table spin. Table spin consists of many things. It consists of, we can search for a table. If there are many number of tables, you can actually search for a variable. For example, if I say quantity, right? So it'll tell you where the quantity is. It can tell you, this is the table where you can find order quantity. There's something called as order quantity in this particular table. So you can search for a variable straight away. You can apply filter, right? You can do a number of things. So this is the table view consisting of data. This is your data as we are on the data tab. It is just showing you data. There's another tab which is called as analytics, which gets activated once we put data into the sheet. This is the playground which I'm talking about. Okay, so I'll just talk about this is your stage, the entire playground. This is your stage. And this is where the entire graph charts, whatever you call diagrams will come over here. And once the diagrams charts comes over here, the analytics portion gets activated and then we can do a number of things over there as well. We'll see it one by one, right? And then they, just like any other Microsoft tool uh, and just like any other tool, in fact, right? We have a, a bunch of tabs over here. All these tabs do something, right? For example, data, there's a, we can add data over here for the data tab. This is the worksheet tab. This is the dashboard tab. This is the storyboard tab. And each and every tab over here performs a certain function. Again, We'll look at these functions when we, once we start drawing it. For example, I won't be able to explain what happens in the dashboard tab until and unless I create a dashboard because most of the options are right now hidden because I haven't created a dashboard. So once we create a dashboard, we'll come back to this and we'll see what this tab can do for us. And just below the tab, there is a group of symbols over here. Right? Those symbols are also very important. You know what? I think uh, we should draw slight, uh, just, just one chart for us to understand how these things are working. For example, if I talk about, let's say, category and sales, sales amount, let's say. So I'll take sales amount over here, right? And I take category over here. Let's see what happens. So I'll, I'll just take sales amount over here in rows. And I'll take category over here. So uh, this is what is happening right now. This is a very simple, uh, you know, uh, chart. But I think category doesn't work. So I'll take the category out over here because there are only three categories. It doesn't, you know, create a lot of, uh, yeah, this seems to be slightly better. Now, uh, you know, many things can be done using this particular chart. For example, or uh, probably I'll not go for sales over here. I'll just remove sales. I'll go for, on second thoughts, I'll go for order quantity. Let me put in order quantity. So what you're do looking at right now are called as column and row shelf. You can, this is what, you know, uh, I'll just filter out the data, which is not present. So don't worry about it. This is what you put in over here. Well, what you want in columns is put over here. For example, if you look at the columns, the columns are my subcategories. These are nothing but the columns, right? And the rows, which are more horizontal, is nothing but the sum of the order quantity. These are the order quantity. So each and length of each and every bar over here represents the sum of the order quantity, right? Now, as we are talking about, we there are a lot of tabs over here. All tabs can perform certain functions for us. We'll move on to them one by one. Now that we have drawn a graph, we can now understand a lot of symbols over here. For example, 
I can just do this is the control Z. Now control Z works on tablet. You can just do control Z and move on to the previous state. You can keep on doing control Z over here. Now once you do control Z and you think that I should not have done control Z. So this is the option of doing redo. As you can see on the top left corner of the where my cursor is right now. You can see that this is the option of redoing. Now, just beside redoing, we can have some kind of a replay animation, but we'll move on to this later on. This is the option of saving your work. We'll again move on to this. You can save your work over here or you can save your work from here as well, right? One thing that we need to understand, guys, is that same operation can be done from multiple places. So it doesn't mean that everything over here, which is there in the pane, is doing a different thing. The same, for example, I can see saving the work can be done from here and saving the work can be done from the file tab as well, right? Either ways, you'll save your work, right? For example, I can add a database from here is this particular symbol or I can add a database from here as well, right? Then uh, let's understand these symbols over here. As we can see some dash lines. So these are the lines which are this. Uh, these are the group of symbols which will perform the same thing as what tabs are doing. Now, this is something new. We can click on this and we can go for new worksheet, right? We can click on new, uh, this particular symbol over here. Can you just see the same symbol is over here as well towards the bottom, towards the bottom left. This is also going to open up a new worksheet and this is also going to open a new worksheet. Then we have something called as duplicate. We can duplicate this worksheet and then we have, uh, we can clear this worksheet. If I click on this, whatever I've done on this, if I feel that, I probably have gone the wrong way or I need to restart absolutely from the scratch. You can always go for this option. And if you click on it mistakenly, you can always do control Z and get back to the original position. Now you at times you may come across the case that you want to understand. Okay, you understood that. Okay, I've put in wrong things in the rows and columns. I probably should have interchanged them. That is rows should have been in the columns place and columns should have been the rows place. That can also be done using this particular option. You can just click on this. I'm so sorry, control Z, you can click on this and the rows and columns will interchange. This is the one which is basically to clear the sheet. Now, as you can see, we get we get to, you know, uh, sort the data in the ascending and the descending order over here. We click on this, the data gets sorted in the ascending order. We click on this, the data gets sorted in the descending order and so on like this. So ascending order and descending order, right? Now here we can edit stuff, you know, we can highlight things, but let's keep it for later. And uh, let's keep the rest of the symbols for later. We'll keep on moving to them, right? So each and every aspect over here, for example, presentation mode, we can talk about showing and hiding cards. All this will keep on coming as we keep on drawing different charts and different diagrams, right? Now uh, there's something called a standard view over here. Standard, you can click on fit width, then it's going to fit in the width. You can click on fit height if you want it like that, but it's already have fit and height or you can go for entire view, which will fit width and fit height as well. It'll take the entire space, right? Now, after this, this is column and row shelf. We've already seen these are the um, oh, the topmost tabs over here. These are certain symbols that we've seen. This is the table view where you can find the entire set of data and analytics. Now, analytics, now it would have got activated because I've drawn a certain chart over here. What you can do is n number of things are there. You can go for constant line. You can go for average line. You can go for median with quartiles and plenty of stuff is there. But let's move on to it one by one after some time. Okay. Now, once we have seen this, once you've seen this, and once we have seen the shelves, there are two things. In fact, in total, there are four things now that we need to see. One, pages. The other one is filters. Right. The third one is marks. And the fourth one is show me. So this is the show me tab over here towards the right, top right. This is the pages tab. This is the filters tab. And this is the marks. These four are the major ones over here. In fact, I can very safely say that you draw your charts based on these five things. Which five things? The show me, column and row shelves, pages, filters, and marks. Marks being the most important. Marks can then further do things for you. It can give you color to the chart. I mean, it can give color to the chart. It can give size. It can vary the size over here. It can label the chart. It can give certain details to the chart. And it can give you tooltip as well. Once we study marks, we'll understand all these things in detail. So this is your tableau pane. This is how the tableau pane will be looking like. And I think we can 
probably start by understanding, you know, we have already understood the data tab over here. We can now probably understand show me tab, right? So let me start with this. Now, if I click on show me, show me just opens up a list of diagrams or list of charts. Now, uh, just to uh, understand show me, let me clear this sheet. I can just click on this, right? I can just click on this, sorry, this one. I can just click on this and remove whatever I've done on this. Now, what I do at times is I'm not sure about what kind of, uh, you know, uh, graph to draw based on certain variables. For example, I selected ship date, clicked on it, pressed control on my keyboard and clicked on the next variable, which is sales amount. So in a way, what I've done is I've selected two variables. Now I want to understand which kind of diagram can I draw, which kind of chart can I draw. This is where show me comes into picture. Show me will tell you of all the available charts on show me, it will tell you which chart will fit in the best over here. As you can see, there are certain charts which are activated. There are certain charts which are, which are not activated, which are more towards, you know, they're slightly shallow and you can just see their shadow. You'll not be able to see them properly. So, for example, this chart over here is not activated. This chart, which is actually called a symbol maps, not activated. Maps, not activated. Bar, not activated. Side-by-side -side bars. And there are plenty of other diagrams like this one, not activated, dual diagrams. This is histogram. This is, you know, bullet graphs. They're all not activated because being a business intelligence tool, AI, to whatever extent, is a small portion of this particular tool. Now, it understood the variables. It understood that ship date is a date variable and sales amount is a numeric variable, right? And based on a date and a numeric variable, what are the best way of representing them is what is being shown over here. Tableau would have already selected, of all the suggested diagrams, Tableau would have already selected one, which means that Tableau indicates that this is the best diagram to go for these two variables. So if I click on this, this is what we are getting. This is a line chart, right? Now, if I go and look at the entire view, we can go for the entire view, right? This is what uh, Tableau can do, right? So show me tab is majorly suggesting you diagrams. You can actually take the, the best possible suggestion, which is highlighted over here by Tableau, or you can go for any other suggestion. You can click on those suggestions and the uh, charts will change. You can click, just you just have to click on them. That's it. You can convert this into a table. We can convert this into something like this. I think this is a very, uh, you know, uh, very, very ordinary diagram, ordinary chart over here. But yes, we can do it. I mean, if, if you want to present it like this, we can always do that. We can always change, right, the diagram that you want to represent. All these diagrams will keep on changing. And you can always resume back and say that, okay, let me start, let me go back to the uh, chart which is suggested by tab. So show me is that particular tab which is going to recommend diagrams based on the variables that you selected over. Right? That's the job of show. Well, if you look at show me, there are multiple uh, kind of charts. This is table. This is nothing but a heat map. Heat maps are basically there to, you know, use colors and size of these squares as you can see over there. Right? If I just click on this, it's going to use the color and the size of the Right now, it's not using the color, but if I just put some sales over here, it's going to use the colors over here as well, right? And how the colors is being, you know, shown here, the shades of the color, over there. right? Uh, you can do that. And apart from that, you can probably go for, let's say, pie chart. Pie chart is very good at distribution. And as I've selected years and sales amount, it probably is showing the distribution of these total sales earned by the company in the last four years, year wise. Bar chart, we all understand the length of the bar shows the total sales over here as I've selected sales. Then this is something called as circle charts, right? Um, I don't use this one pretty often. So yeah, I mean, think it, this is majorly towards the bubble chart. We can go for line chart as well. As we started with, we can go for box plot. We can go for area charts as well in which, you know, uh, instead of drawing a line, it shades the entire area below that particular line so that certain things can be observed more easily. This is what show me does. I would strongly encourage to have a look at all the charts over here. Have a look at all the charts, right? And uh, I, I doubt that any one of these charts will surprise you because in most of the cases, there are certain charts which are absolutely towards the corner or probably outlier charts over there. But uh, you can uh, rest assured that most of the charts will be easily able to understand the moment we move on to that. 
anyways uh, we'll study each and every chart separately as we keep on drawing different uh, diagrams different uh, we'll represent different variables right so yeah this is what show me does right and and very very important feature and in fact i should say the most unique feature of tableau this feature is not available anywhere right it doesn't give you suggestions no uh, product over here there is a small um, element like this in power bi but uh, it it doesn't really you know uh, perform the same level of function as show me does in tableau right now one more thing i think uh, before we start now if you look at the, all the variables over in the table format there are two kinds of variable over here one is measure the other one is dimension measures are generally the numeric value the continuous value measures are nothing but right the numeric value as we can see there as we can see in any diagram in or rather i should say in any table over here we we'll look at all the variables of the table there is a or probably i'll just go for product right there is a line over here which demarcates between the measures and the dimensions measures are numeric values like price sales quantity sales volume order quantity or uh, perhaps age right anything which is in number format is basically a measure measure can be continuous something like price for example it can take uh continuously take any value between a certain range for example price can be 127.5 can also be 127.6 can also be 127.7 but age after 26 can become 27 only or 25 only there is like 25.5 well well for all practical sense will not be uh, calling anybody 25.5 years old right we'll call it 25 25 years old or well, probably 26 years old so this is categorical data so the numeric data can be both continuous and categorical price sales these are all nothing but continuous numerical variables but age quantity sold 2.2 cannot be the quantity sold it has to be the 2 or 3 so the quantity sold although numeric variable becomes a categorical variable. so the uh, numeric variables are called as measures and the rest of the other variables are called as dimensions dimensions are generally categorical variables or string or textual variables for example in customer case we can see address line birth date community distance you know and date first purchase education first name full name gender where we uh, generally put in text are called as dimensions and number of cars owned number of children at home total children yearly income these are nothing but measures right measures are represented by this hashtag sign and dimensions are represented generally by abc that uh, if they are textual and if they are date format it is represented like this and so on right now <clears throat> these are measures and dimensions we can create our own measures and dimensions using something called as create calculated field over here but we'll move on to this later on once we study tableau better right So let's stop this video. I think uh, this has uh, given you a very clear and good glimpse of uh, what Tableau Paint consists of. We'll uh, we just understood Show Me. We just understood uh, these symbols over here, and uh, these tabs will start. We'll keep on understanding as we keep on drawing different kind of charts along the journey in the tab. We have already understood Table Paint, Analytics, and Data Part. Right now, it's time for us to understand Pages, Filters, and Marks. Let's move to the next video.